expert. She is our content expert today. Cheryl is the marketing specialist from the Barnes Practice in Roanoke, Virginia. And um, Cheryl, can you share with us what your role is as the marketing leader in your practice? Um, sure. Some of the, the main things that I get to work with are new client acquisition, accountability for the advisors. Um, sometimes I tell them I feel like I'm a professional nag because, you know, they pay me to make sure they're doing what they wanted, what they said they would do, right? And um, certainly working through the eight key marketing areas, which really says a lot. I know we're going to be exploring those in just a bit. That is great. What do you find most enjoyable or rewarding in your role? Well, you know, I love our team. I was a, I was a client first, and then the opportunity came uh, in 2012 for me to join in, in the role of marketing. They had not had a marketing person before, and so I um, started following the eight key marketing areas, and I just love our team because, you know, I've been with the practice for a while. I've uh, been a client since 2002, and I like working with people. One of the things that uh, we've worked through with Dawn is, you know, kind of narrowing down and finding our core, what we're looking to do, and mine is connecting to help. So I like that, and I like educating others in areas that, that can really make an impact for their lives. Wow. That's a pretty important role that you have in your practice. Um, just to give a brief background of the Barnes practice where Cheryl comes from, the structure of their practice, they have three advisors, four staff members, including a business processor, administrative assistant, financial planning specialist, and Cheryl as the marketing specialist. Throughout the presentation, Cheryl is going to be sharing some of their practice activities and what she has discovered to be most successful when working with their marketing plan. So let's first start by asking ourselves, what is a marketing plan? It's basically a blueprint, um, a blueprint which outlines the company's marketing efforts. It's the bigger picture. Um, Basically, it is a realistic plan by design by the advisor, and it's also a collaborative effort within the team to reach preset practice goals. Having said that, um, this goes out to all of our participants. Why would you think a marketing plan is important? Does anybody have any comments on that question? Can I pick on someone? <laughs> Tara, can I pick on you? Why would you think a marketing plan is important in your practice? Um, I think a marketing plan is important because it, you know, it reminds you that yes, you have clients and you have the daily aspects, um, but if you don't bring in clients, then you don't have a business. So it's this kind of circle of balance. That is exactly right. Um, in addition to that, a marketing plan can assist in um, gaining new business, revenue, implementing a plan, budgeting, and also team member accountability. Before we get into the marketing plan itself, there are four resources that I'll be sharing with you during this webinar. These resources can also be found in Turnkey Solutions. And at the end of the webinar, I will share the path where you can find this information and connect. Other than Cheryl, is there anyone currently using the KMG annual marketing plan process? Okay, well, that's kind of a, a good sign. Um, our goal today is to discuss how to implement and stay in line with your practice goals 
by utilizing the KMG annual marketing plan process. Additionally, we recommend using the following resources. The first is Reflect, and this is where you'll review the previous year's plan. You'll be able to identify which marketing activities that were effective from the year before, which ones were beneficial, and which ones are repeatable. Second is the plan. Typically, you'll be planning for the upcoming year, and you'll begin with the KMG Marketing Plan Questionnaire. The questionnaire is going to identify the needs and focus of the practice, and we'll look more closely into the questionnaire on the next slide. Third is learn. Learn is what is required for each event in advance, whether it be compliance, paperwork, wholesaler contact and reimbursement, and any additional training that you may need. And last is accountability and follow through. By using the provided guidelines, you'll be able to properly identify which action items and team members are accountable for completing assigned tasks and follow up. Furthermore, it is highly recommended that the marketing plan process begin on October 1st and completed by December 1st in order to properly implement your plan. The second resource and possibly the most important is the marketing plan questionnaire. The outcome of this questionnaire is going to determine how you choose to structure your marketing plan for the upcoming year. It consists of multiple sections, which include background, goals and basic plan, marketing team and meeting, the eight key marketing activities found in Advisor Compass, which we will look more closely at um, in the slides to come, budget, commitment, and finally next steps, which will allow you to designate team members, update roles and responsibilities, identify tasks, and additional information that you'll be needing. So here's a clip of the questionnaire. And as you can see, it's very easy to use and straightforward. Next is our third resource, which is the KMG Marketing Plan. This is typically determined by the advisor, and once determined, the marketing leader will then identify the marketing team and responsibilities. And here's a brief clip of the KMG marketing plan. Again, an easy tool to complete. And the last of our four resources is the seminar and event checklist which will assist you with a task list and a timeline to follow for your seminars and events throughout the year. And here's a snapshot of the checklist, if anyone is interested. In my experience, this has been one of the most beneficial tools to assist you in your process. And you will find that it will guide you through your seminar and event checklist, not only with dates, but also with compliance-related requirements. It'll show you right on the checklist. After you've completed the questionnaire and the goals have been identified, the next step in the process is to incorporate the Ameriprise eight key marketing activities. These eight activities are going to provide you with the tools to develop a comprehensive marketing plan for the upcoming year. By using these activities, they will help you engage with prospects and clients in your community and drive growth for your practice. Let's take a look at each of the activities. Beginning with activity number one, take advantage of your advisor website. So for all of our participants, what do you think are the benefits of the advisor's website? Let me ask a different question. Is who on the call today maintains their advisor website, if anyone? 
This is Tara um, for Sherry. I'm the one that Alan and I do that a lot for the website. Uh, we at least make sure the events are updated and new pictures and such. Um, I think it's important because everyone uses online now. That's you know, if someone wants to look up Sherry's name, that's the first place they'll go. That is pretty big information, and you are exactly right. Um, other benefits to the advisor's website would be to um, encourage clients to sign into the secure site and also to educate the clients through relevant articles on your website, newsletters, calculators. You can also ask for referrals, share your advisor's story with prospects, and differentiate your practice from other advisors. Engage your clients and prospects through social media, and also to showcase your advisor's personality and qualification. Cheryl, how do you maintain your advisor's site, and what information do you monitor or change? Uh, well, I have it on Staff Pass. That's where I use for uh, my marketing task, and I have it on there to check at least once a month. Um, I, I love the website advisor editing tool so because it gives you that scorecard and tells you where you can go and improve uh, the scores that was like the first thing that I did and um, Jay one of our advisors thought that that was just the greatest thing because he could see that I would get excited when when I got you know when I got their percentages up and I have Stuart's up at a hundred percent right now and um, and he said why can't you why can't you like think about applying that to all the eight key marketing areas and so I kind of do that as well um, I look for the changes that corporate recommends, and right now that Be Brilliant, you know, our ad that's running, um, I believe they actually place the video on our websites, but we can change and put into that um, special one. We can put that Be Brilliant there, and I think that's just great to, you know, as folks are maybe coming to our websites now because of that ad, we also have that up there, and they, you know, it just all matches together for them. Um, the, the events, I mean, Tara's right on with that, kind of keeping those on there and make sure people know that there are things going on, uh, the pictures of recent events, and um, I think that just shows that we're personable. And, um, and even like I was telling the guys today, I mean, Stuart and I wore kind of complimenting outfits. I said, well, maybe we'll start taking our pictures of you know when we coordinate and put it on Facebook, I know that that goes into what we're talking about next. But you know a lot of the photos you still put on there and just say, hey, this is you know again more personable and trying to make that connection. I changed the articles, um, the article section based on the time of year. Like, is it now? Should we start to look at tax time as we're in the last quarter, um, and and those types of things, and just kind of use. Advisor Compass as the guide for the downloads. I use I put a lot of our forms on there too. That that's fantastic information. Can you um, tell me how often that you do monitor or change your website? Well, I have it on there to look at um, to to look at every month to make sure what's going on. But I tell you what, I typically make some type of change at least every other week. Um, and I know everybody on this call probably knows about, you know, you make changes and it's going to raise you up to the top of the list. I mean, something typically, you know, something will change. I, I The thing that I'm going to be working on now is making sure I get more pictures out there. I will say that, um, that I've not gotten as many out there as I would like. And, uh, you know, one of the things is, and I'm, I'm bad about this, if we're doing an event, and I know I need to get that disclosure um, that's found in Activity 1. I know I need to get that signed by everybody, and sometimes I just don't get that piece done. So that's one of the things that I'm going to be looking at. And so with, we've got a big one coming up this Saturday, and so I hope to get you know, lots of pictures out there. And then National Day of Service, that's going to be a, another great opportunity to get those pictures out there. Thank you. Just to follow up a little bit with the rest of you on the um, photo waiver that Cheryl was just referring to, um, there are compliance guidelines that uh, pertain to photos on your advisor websites. 
photos that are not the advisor's staff member or immediate family members, there is a waiver that does have to be completed if you have um, clients posted on your website. So um, just keep that in mind going forward. <clears throat> so I'd like to take a poll at this time as we go into activity number two, which is social media. And the poll is, does your practice use Go Social? All right, looks like we're at mm, about 60-40%, which is really good. Um, go social, or I will say social media and go social, play a valuable role in the key marketing activities. It's used to grow your practice by expanding your press prospect pipeline as well as deepening relationships with existing clients. And Cheryl, can you share with us how your practice um, uses social media through GoSocial? Sure, we were actually a test practice for Facebook before I came in as a marketing person and we use it, we use it there to post events, which I'd say is one of our, um, our best uses of that. We, you know, we share it on there, we put the event on there, and then we go to our, I typically go to my personal page, and then I invite the other advisors that are on Facebook and um, have them invite their friends. And so when they do that, again, it's gonna show up in, in their feeds, and then they share it. We've done this, we're having a fall shred day this Saturday, and we did one in the spring, and we had people just saying, wow, I can't believe you're doing this, and there's no charge with that. And so the events, the way that we put it on there for the events, I think that just really, really helps. We also do educational events, and we, you know, I just kind of pick through my, some of my local friends that I think might, you know, either know somebody they can invite them to or come themselves, and um, we, do, we do that. We also use, um, in Go Social, we use the events that, excuse me, not the events, the um, information, the pre-approved um, articles that they have. And uh, Nick Tucker with KMG, um, who I work with as, a, as my coach, he is always liking our stuff, so that's always good. At least we get one like out there, right? So we, we put that out there, and hopefully folks are finding information about that. And as they comment, we uh, comment back when that's appropriate. Um, we also like the social signals that come from Go Social, and that, so that um, means that when your network, people in your network make changes, they get a new job, they um, have a birthday or something like that, we can see that come up, and then again, that's another opportunity to uh, comment back and connect with them. Um, we also, like if they have, um, you know, if we have new folks coming in, we may have the opportunity to a look and see if they're already connected to us or people that we know or um, second or third connections, something like that. And sometimes that's beneficial as well. Yeah, it really is a great feature that they provide. Next is the um, online client experience, which is activity number three. The online client experience can help you maintain communication and create efficiency with your clients and your prospects. The secure site is available at Ameriprise.com and it's designed so that you can work with your clients and prospects when, where, and how they want to. Some of the features of the online client experience are being able to view statements and documents immediately. Um, there is also an e-signature feature that allows the clients to sign documents electronically. And other options can include money movement, trading, and online bill pay. And Cheryl, can you um, explain how effective has this process been for your practice? 
Sure. I will um, first speak as a client, and as a client, I personally love the system because it just you know gives you the information that you want at your fingertips. And so, with that being said, we have the advisors encourage clients to sign up in each meeting if they haven't already done so. Um, our percentage is, I think it's pretty good for kind of where we are. You know, we have a, an aging population and, you know, don't count those folks out because some of them like to be on there as well. You know, we've got some um, folks in our client base that are on that you wouldn't think they'd be on and some younger ones aren't. But those tech-savvy clients, you know, it's a no-brainer for them. Now, when Angela, our business processor, has to um, have folks sign papers, especially if they're busy, they're, you know, working folks, um, she she gets them, if they're not already signed up, she can get them to sign up sometimes that way. And they seem to really appreciate that and just makes it faster. And, you know, we see that as a wave of the future. So I think that, you know, our practices, if they're not already heading that way, we soon will be. Mm -hmm. I think that um, speaking from a, being a client myself as well, um, my advisor has, sent me documents through my Ameriprise.com site and I've um, been out of the area and able to get that paperwork back to him immediately. So um, it's also great from um, a staffing standpoint as well. If you have documents that are time sensitive that you can, you know, get those signed and back in a timely manner. Next, we will move on to the fourth activity, which is client and prospect contact through Marketing On Demand. And Marketing On Demand is Ameriprise's online system that lets you automatically send personalized communications throughout the year. And um, can you give us an example of what types of communication is sent in the Barnes practice? Uh, yes, we actually send the from our practice, and I believe it's um, there's one in there called Consolidated. We send that newsletter each month. Uh, we also send e-birthday greetings and holiday greetings, and I I typically check in there about every other month. That's that's kind of when they add new things and just see if something's new and review it and see if we want to use it. Sometimes the advisors do, and sometimes they don't. And you know, and we're not looking to over flood folks with it, but. With the uh, the from our practice consolidated, Stuart would tell me that you know every time that it goes out, he typically gets a, at least a couple of comments, and that's keeping us top of mind with people. And usually, how those things come is, I'm going to send it to talk to you about this, and you know, so you it, it's just a kind of a easy way to get just a reminder. Uh, we on staff for each for the 20th every month and sometimes at the end of the month. That way there are folks who have moved over from con uh, contact manager to make sure that they get onto the list then. Um, the, I'll tell you, the biggest thing that we use it for is we also do um, a combination of client appreciation and prospecting through, we're fortunate to have a, a, the Red Sox team, the farm team here, and we um, bought a season, we, we have season suites, and so we get our clients to bring, you know, we invite the clients, but then they invite like up to 18 or 16 of their guests or 18 tickets typically. And we, um, as we're collecting the information that we need for compliance there, we also um, put them on marketing on demand and that keep, keeps them kind of just linked to our practice a little bit. And the beautiful thing about marketing on demand is if they don't want to get it, they are able to self-select out of it. Yeah, I, yeah, that is, um, that is one thing that is really good about that. You cut out just a little bit when you were talking about um, how a client or prospect can become enrolled in Marketing On Demand. Um, so I just want to clarify that portion. When you enter in a new client or prospect into Contact Manager and um, they 
provide you with an email. They are automatically set up to receive the marketing on demand communication. And well, um, that's 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 where I um, you know they they come over. They are automatically set up, but you actually have to physically move them from one part and say that you want them to get that. And that's what I do between the twentieth of the month and the end of the month. So they may mm -hmm. come over but you actually have to physically move them down to accept the newsletter? I think there's a and timeline. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and then there's also a way to, um, if you want to just put them in without having them in contact manager, there's also a way to do that. And I think the marketing on demand help desk will help you with that or the help settings in marketing on demand. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you for that information because I think that is extremely important to know. So for everyone else, moving on to activity number five, to all of our participants, what is your practice's primary source of new clients? Does anybody know? For us, it's referrals. This is Carrie from the Smiley Practice. That is exactly right. Um, activity number five refers to um, referrals, networking, and prospecting. This is important because most people prefer to find a financial advisor through an introduction from someone that they know. By networking and building relationships, you'll be able to generate higher quality referrals. And Cheryl, I'll let you touch on this as well. Um, can you briefly describe your prospect policy and how your team uses it? Uh, yes, I um, worked with Nick Tucker in developing the prospect policy for um, when we get them, you know, when we get new folks coming in through either from the website, which is sometimes a referral. We actually took one today from somebody who had been talking to somebody else who was using us, and they came through um, the website as well. We have a general information sheet and collect the information. We then process, the, you know, process those documents to say, I get as much, if I get them first, I get as much information as I can. Um, and we give them the option of either um, talking to an advisor, if an advisor is available then, or having one call them back, or going ahead and getting them scheduled in. And um, we send them the you know, pre-meeting paperwork, uh, bio on our team, and we also, within that uh, process that we've built, we also, if they tell us who, they, who referred them, we uh, incorporate sending a thank you note slash gift to them as well. Um, so, Another note that I had made was about, but this, I think this is coming up a little bit later, so I'll let you take it again, Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, moving on to activity number six. We're going to start with another poll. And from here, I will ask everyone, how many client events does your practice host per year? All right. And how many seminars does your practice host per year? All right. So in activity number six, which is the seminars and events activity. These seminars and events can be used for prospecting, client acquisition, educational needs, community service, as well as any other preferred focus areas in your practice. And there are 
so many options available depending on your your demographics and um, who your target audiences are. I will again let Cheryl, our content expert, explain what events and seminars have been most effective for their practice. Well, it seems like our folks are just like loving the shred day. We started with another advisor locally who didn't have room to do one in their parking lot, and they uh, came to us with it. And we did it, didn't really know what to expect, and we let some folks know. We had a pretty good turnout. We were actually, though, uh, a little drenched because it poured down <laughs> rain. So we got our feet literally wet with that one. We did another one this spring, and we combined with our CPA. And what's really neat about that is we were able to um, co-introduce people. So like if they had some clients that they wanted to introduce to us then, and, and vice versa, we had the opportunity to do that. So so successful that we've added a mortgage um, a gentleman in, one of our other COIs, and we're going to do, we'll have that going on this Saturday. Um, we give them, you know, we're having cookies to begin with. We're doing a 10 to 1 this time. We'll have cookies and some coffee, and then the guys get into grilling the hot dogs, and we do chips and that kind of stuff. And we, we didn't have enough chairs last time. People wanted to sit down and stay a while, and we kind of thought they'd want to get out and go, and so we're going to make sure the chairs are all on the checklist this time. Um, so they, they love that. They love our baseball games, and I know not everybody's going to have that opportunity, but it's, you know, you can do some – smaller things or just, you know, there's so many ideas. I always like to, you know, talk to other Ameriprise folks and learn what they're doing. Um, the educational seminars that we're doing, we have one coming up this Tuesday, and we are going to be having that brochure along with our some of our other information with the Shred Day and giving that to them. I'll tell you, this is our fourth one now that we've done on maximizing your Social Security benefit. Will, will your Social Security meet your retirement needs? And um, I know we're going to be talking about this a little bit in the one to come, but we've been advertising in the paper for this one. And we also invite our um, clients to come and bring a friend if they want or if they just want to come themselves um, to one and see what things are like so they feel comfortable in referring. And um, that's been really good for us, too. So. Um, it's, but I tell you, it's all trial and error. So <laughs> keep that in mind as you go through it. That is so true. And um, I think that's where the questionnaire at the very beginning when we talked about the questionnaire, it, it basically does determine what has worked for you in the past and what's repeatable going forward. So mm -hmm. that's always something to keep track of. And um, there was a... Another question I had for you based on, I want to back up just for one second, the uh, referral tip sheets and questionnaires that you use for your clients, do these come into play when you are planning your events and your seminars? You know, we um, did one of the, the client questionnaires, we did one in the fall of 2012. And we asked them, well, it was interesting, in that, in that particular questionnaire, we asked them, uh, did they know how we got paid? And so the answers to that <laughs> were yeah. quite interesting. We, um, and I just wanted to mention that because if you haven't asked your client, if your advisors haven't asked your clients that, that is an interesting question to see what they um, know and understand about that. But we, we did that. We also asked them how would they feel most comfortable referring us. And they said, you know, I'm okay with just having them call you. Or some of them said, I'd like to bring them to something first. So they know that, you know, they can come with me and I'm going to keep them safe and, you know, that, that type of thing. But, yes, we ask them what they're looking for. Um, and we kind of, you know, we always have the brochures in their folders. And that prompts them if they're looking for something else, like if they were looking for identity threat, theft, which is a, you know, a, a good one to go hand in hand with a shred day type of thing. We might work towards that, or if they're looking for, you know, if they're just looking for how do I organize my home? We've met with a professional organizer. She's sending folks to us with shred day. So, so that um, that really plays in. You know, if you do something that you want to do because you want to do it, it's not necessarily going to bring them in. So that's we think their their information is invaluable. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
Moving on to activity number seven is local advertising and media relations. Um, this activity can increase awareness for your practice and leverage the strength of the Ameriprise brand. Some examples of this would be radio advertisement, print or newspaper ads, billboards, online advertisements. Um, Cheryl, before I ask you what your practice does, I wouldn't mind getting some feedback from our participants as to what types of advertising their practices do. Carrie, do, do you, um, are you aware of the advertising that this Miley practice does? Uh, I don't think we do any advertising such as okay. that. As far as I know, unless Georgia, she would be in charge of that. But I'm almost positive we do not do that. Okay. So Cheryl, can you share with us some of the methods that you use in the Barnes practice? Sure. And I'll tell you this, uh, three years ago, our answer would have been the same as yours, probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, yep. if, if any of you are, um, you know, the, the, the person that gets the call when all the advertisers call in and, and want to speak with somebody, you probably get bombarded with that. And so we were, we were getting that too. They actually were putting an ad in one of our um, local, it's called the Roanoker, and it has a pretty good staying power, and they were doing that to begin with. It's fairly expensive. And so, you know, as I started to dig through the eight key marketing areas, you know, seven kind of is down there a little bit and it's certainly if you look at your budget it's going to be one of the biggest ones but Stuart said you know what I really would want somebody to do a plan for us and help us I mean you know I'm a planner I you know I don't think I'm not a you know I'm not an advertising person I'm not a marketing person I don't feel like I know the best and so we talked through it some and then I guess I got like two or three calls in one week and he said look let's just get some people to do a proposal for us and so we did that I we interviewed together um, Jay and Stuart and I interviewed three different companies we really uh, decided that two of them would probably fit our needs the best we had both of them uh, do an advertising plan for us and present it to us and we liked both of them uh, one of them gave us uh, and this is the one that we decided not to go with but we did um, take their idea of really owning Ameriprise the Ameriprise name in your marketplace and that has been a you know just a really good thing for us and as the national advertising comes on we want them to think of us and so some of the things if we did finally pick one some of the things that they are helping us with with is we actually have a spot on the local news as uh, sponsoring closed captioning and one of the things that an advertising company can do for you is they can help you with the price uh, they have the contacts and if they if folks are calling you individually they're gonna give you you know their their price their rack price what they're asked to to give you really by their managers and they were able to help us negotiate that for a hundred dollars a week and they told us at first they said you're going to see that on the news your people are going to see it on the news and they see it once we advertise uh one time a week on wednesday night in between like the the news and the weather and it's funny they were right they said they're going to think that they are that you advertise all the time and we don't we just do that one and people come up to us oh yeah i see you on the news all the time and so the value that an advertising company can bring and we do advertise our we advertise with the chambers too we advertise in their you know and what they send out to their membership I'm doing one right now with our one of our local chambers and it cost me $45 to send down an e-blast to all their chamber members so you know we think about advertising we think it's this great big huge thing when it, there are a lot of things that um, we can do and I would highly recommend you know thinking about talking to some marketing companies. Mm -hmm. Those are some really great tips. Um, and exactly what you said, a lot of people do think that advertising is expensive, but always keep in mind there's, you know, everything's negotiable, and um, to look around and again, find out what works for you. 
So lastly, we have activity number eight, which is practice branding. And practice branding is a Ameriprise branding and its logo guidelines. We sometimes think we don't use practice branding or um, really tap into it as much as we think we do. However, most likely, we all use and or see the branding all around us every single day. There's two types of branding, um, either personal branding or office branding. And the personal branding would include things such as advisor biographies, um, advisors professional awards that they have displayed, email signatures, uh, local sponsorships, or branded merchandise, anything with the Ameriprise logo on it. And there's also office branding, which includes the client dream display. Um, other things that we don't think of as branding would be our on-hold messaging program, um, the same music that you hear when you're put on hold, whether it's in our office or with home office and all signage in your office and, and around your office. So my, my question is to Cheryl and everyone, um, is there anything unique that you've come across in your branding experiences? Cheryl? Well, I'll tell you one thing. That, oh, there we go. <laughs> one thing that um, Stuart got in the mail, and he said, "Hey, let's do this." And I know you guys are going to think this might be, you know, just small, but you know, our people loved it. We got the stop the pins with our um, at the Tom Barnes and Associates on it, and it had the stylus on the end. And you know, the clients just loved that because so many people are using iPads, iPhones, and and they they love that one. We recently changed our name and merged with some other groups and said so our, our name now is the Mirius group. And just getting shirts that say that, it prompts people, what, what's that name on there? What, you know, what is that about? And, you know, just sponsoring events that attract a wide group of people. Um, hopefully, you know, like, like some folks will say, where's your ideal client going to be? Is it the opera? Is it you know, what is it? And we found that it's community, you know, just community um, events. And there's one where they bring speakers in about once a quarter, and one of them was the, well, the um, Black Dog Salvage guys are actually here. They were one of them, and, and so folks from the community come, and we sponsored that, so we got, you know, listed as a sponsor on that. And, you know, just, just again, you never know what people, what, what, it's not just one thing that gets them, it's several different things aligning at the right time. And it's just some hit and miss sometimes, but I always keep my eye open for things I think are going to work. So. <laughs> Do you um, order uh, any of your branding merchandise from the company store? Yes, as a matter of fact, we uh, we do pins, um, different pins, not the ones I mentioned, but we do. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of it, but we do a pen from there and uh, notepads. We did. Uh, we have done large confident retirement. When I say large, our numbers are about 35 or 40 confident retirement dinners, and we have those pens and pads there. We're bringing prospects and clients to that. We have them in the meeting rooms. We use them for that. I love the purse hanger, and it's only <laughs> $2.99, I believe. So if <laughs> If the ladies, you know, need a purse hanger and want to order a sample, I think that's a great thing to get. We haven't used that yet, but as we start to do some women's events, I think that would be just a great one to do. Um, but when you can get your own branding, which you can, you know, you can do for the prices like so low, I believe it's like $50, and they do all the different uh, things for you, that's a great thing to do as well. So you're branding Ameriprise, but then you're also branding your practice. Mm -hmm. Yep, great tips. So for anyone who is not aware of the company store, um, you can do a search in Advisor Compass, and it will direct you where to go, and you can order your own office branding merchandise from there. 
So in wrapping that up, I'd like to ask everyone, um, does anyone have any different types of marketing strategies that are going well for them? I know most of our participants on today's call um, are just kind of newly getting familiar with the eight key marketing activities. I, I want to thank everybody for attending today. And I also want to show you, um, as we spoke of or I mentioned earlier in the webinar, that there's a reference path in Connect that will get you started with the um, marketing plan. And this reference would be to go to Turnkey Solutions, then Marketing and Client Acquisition. And inside this folder, you'll find your four resources that I spoke about at the very beginning of the webinar. If anybody has any questions on um, any of this material or resources going forward, um, feel free to um, ask your contact at KMG. Anybody here, of course, would be happy to help you out. And I would like to ask if there's any additional questions from anyone. All right. Well, Cheryl, I would like to take an extra moment to thank you for being our content expert today.